Hi everyone, and welcome to this episode two of The Inner Racer. Now, so for those of you who are brand new to the channel, my name's Aaron, I'm from London, England, and I'm just a regular guy who's decided to become a racing driver. Now, I've decided to set up this channel to document my journey along the way as I race in the Cater and Motorsport Championship for 2022. Now, if you've watched my first episode, you'll know that my very first racing weekend was at the Brands Hatch Circuit in England, and it was quite eventful. And I'm very happy to report that since then, I've embarked on my second racing weekend. So how exactly did it go? Stay tuned to find out. So, sunny Snetterton in Norfolk was the location for our second round of the Cater and Roseport Championship. As a reminder, the race weekend format consists of one 15-minute qualifying session and two 20-minute races. So, on to qualifying. Um, I'd say qualifying was quite challenging for me for a number of reasons. So, uh, prior to qualifying, uh, typically we usually have Thursday and Friday for testing. Um, I was only able to attend uh, testing on Friday, uh, but it was a bit of a washout to be honest with you. Uh, morning sessions were completely wet um, and in the afternoon I was able to do two, uh, two dry testing sessions, but that only consisted of about eight laps in total to be honest. So um, I came into this session uh, pretty blind, uh, but nevertheless I tried to get in uh, the cleanest laps I could. And here we see highlights of my first flying qualifying lap which is which was actually my fastest out of the five that I did um, so yeah you see me coming across from the traffic there driving wasn't too too bad I don't, don't think um, but yeah it was just uh, difficult for me to get into the groove with uh, yeah, limited track time in the testing uh, days uh, prior um, as, I can, as you can see the, the slipstream effect is pretty uh, important and powerful as an editor, as you see me try to get one there. And uh, in the end, I qualified in 20th place, uh, which wasn't ideal um, and uh, a bit lower than I was hoping for. But then it came time to see what I could do for the race. Um, so here's the beginning of race uh, one. I just have a quick look at my hand on the, on the gear knob there. Um, I'm just setting my timer for the race there but inexplicably you can see me putting the gear stick back into neutral I got distracted as I had an itch in my uh, eye so I'm setting the revs and bite point for the start and absolute disaster <laughs> I'd uh, forgotten to put it in, for, well I've forgotten to put it back in first gear as you can see there and uh, all the cars just whizzed past me as I was uh, yeah, trying to start and then imaginary start because the car wasn't even in gear. You saw that I was looking into my mirrors because uh, my immediate thought was I hope no one crashes into me but luckily uh, the drivers uh, behind me went around me but not ideal. I mean it's, I'm glad that happened towards the back of the, the grid and not the front. Um, but anywhere on, on, the, on the road that wouldn't be ideal anyway. But nevertheless, despite that, as you can see by the first hairpin, I was uh, not, too, not too deep in the pack. Um, messed up a gear change there. But despite that, at this point, I think I was second from last out of all the cars. So from here, I'm just in damage uh, limitation mode, trying to uh, not lose the last two places so that I'm plumb last but also trying to make up places um, and that's a fine balance uh, in the first lap of the race trying to obviously make advances um, and also trying not to lose places as well and it's a balancing act but you know as you see me messing up my change from uh, second to third there I'm not helping my cause in any way whatsoever and by this point I'm just trying to settle myself into uh, into a rhythm um, I'm still on the tail of the, the pack ahead 
and coming into uh, the back straight here, my main focus is on trying to get the best, best exit to take advantage of, uh, of the slipstream, which as I mentioned is very, very important here. Here I think I probably pulled out of it a bit too early. Um, ideally I would have done that further along the straight, but hey, I'm brand new to this series and uh, only done a handful of laps on the track for this weekend. But um, yeah, coming into Brundle there, haven't lost too much time. So here coming through uh, this corner, as I said, my main objective is just to hang on to that pack and see what I can do um, as we get to the, uh, the final corner and on to the, uh, the pit straight. I mean, I'm trying to look at positives here. I mean, looking back at this video, I think the sky looks beautiful. This was about 10 to six at night. So uh, the sun was setting nicely and it was still quite warm, so ideal conditions for, uh, for racing, I would say. You can see me in the uh, slipstream here. The car in front is actually, I found actually had a very good top speed belying that uh, too slow number plate there. And uh, coming in here, I would, didn't carry as much speed through as I wanted to, but he gets a bit wide and I'm able to, uh, to get past. Um, and the car in front, quite defensive, so not able to take advantage of, of the gap there. Coming out of uh, first Epping, he exchanged into third, which was very nice there, which I'm happy with. Um, and as I said, just trying to uh, make inroads and make amends for my bad start. And yeah, coming into the, the second hairpin here, making up some time on the uh, on the driver ahead. How's my gear change coming out here? Yep, yeah, that that was good. coming through here another another driver coming off the road I mean with these incidents it's so easy to get distracted but um, it's just so important to keep focused on the, on the task at hand despite what's going on around you and into the uh, back straight here once again trying to get into that all important slipstream as these cars to be honest even though the performance and handling feels great they've got the aerodynamics of a, of a breeze block and I don't say that negatively it's just a fact so getting to that straight into that slipstream down long straights like this is so important and here um, I can try to half commit to the move and almost get my uh, nose cut off there with a bit of oversteering to into that corner and uh, yeah you saw that uh, that attempt lost me a bit of time but as the slipstream is quite powerful yeah I was just trying to use that to make up time and around this corner I found yeah being in the dirty air that the rear end was quite um, quite uh, quite lively and I must also mention that I'm on brand new tyres as well so the tyres I'm on at this point of the race have only done the eight laps uh, that I've done in testing and a half of the laps in qualifying uh, which made things quite tricky because that's not optimal for, uh, for these cars so that's another kind of challenge that was thrown into the mix for my for my race. And coming in here, you see me still hanging on to the uh, to the back of the pack. And yeah, another missed gear change from second to fifth, allowing uh, the driver I overtook the lap before to get past me, undoing all of my uh, my, my hard work. But hey, that just means I get to have a bit more fun with uh, <laughs> my race craft and overtaking. So. I take the move back immediately there and into the second hairpin, Agostini. Quite like that name. Yeah, maximizing the exit there. Going over a bit, going over the limit a bit, I think. And uh, into uh, Hamilton here. And uh, making up more time on the drivers that uh, I've been with before. And once again, just trying to um, get my head down and focus on getting the best text onto that back straight to get the optimal uh, slipstream. So here, uh, the car in front has also got a slipstream which makes, makes things challenging, but then he pulls out. So I've got the option to stay behind this car, the white car, and uh, also benefit from this one on the left. But ultimately, I didn't feel that I was uh, close enough to, to make a move. 
So yeah, just the case of being patient and uh, trying to uh, find that all-important opportunity to, to pounce again. I'm trying to see if there's a gap here, but not really. Close, just close straight away. And yeah, just trying to uh, keep that back end of mine in check as we go through. So coming into the first corner here on the next lap, I actually carry a decent amount of speed through the first corner and try to make a move into the first hairpin. Just locked up completely as the driver closed off the, the gap. Pretty sharpish. And uh, coming out, I get an okay exit, but my main focus now is just to see how much time I can make up through this left-hander here, which I do. And just try and see whether there's a move on for, uh, for the hairpin at Agostini here. And this time, I don't feel that there, uh, there is. And yeah, going back into uh, Hamilton, just trying to keep on the tail of the driver in front. And managed to get by him on the uh, on the outside then to the uh, the next corner there, which I was very happy with. And once again, just looking ahead now to the next driver in the pack, I see that he's pushing very hard. He's uh, right on the limit, using all of those curbs, coming into the uh, the onto the entry to the the back back straight. And coming coming up here, I didn't really get close enough into the slip street, but after the back straight, I make a fair bit of uh, progress into uh, into the gap that he's got uh, in front of me. I'm trying to get as close as I can to that all important final corner to get uh, to get good drive onto the pit straight here. Now here I'll get pretty close and I'm in prime position to uh, to get into the slipstream. And here I think in hindsight I've actually come out of that slipstream a bit too early um, but nevertheless it was kind of an inadvertent dummy into the into the first corner uh, but to be honest I didn't really have too much confidence in the in the back end I think uh, with the with the new tires I did feel a bit of rear end instability to be honest with you you can, you can really see that coming into the first corner I'm not really taking in as much speed as I ideally want to, as I ideally want to and uh, then again you know that uh, Going from second to fifth, missing that gear shift, just unacceptable at this level. Um, you know, this championship is so closely matched um, that making mistakes like that, you just get punished and see I do it again. Um, so that's something that uh, yeah, I really want to be working on uh, for the next race or the next round. Um, and as you see a driver there, you know, taking advantage of me missing missing my, my gear shift, but then I'm able to uh, you know, take uh, retake the lead, not the lead. I wish, <laughs> but retake that position as he as he spins on the exit there. Another incident here, so he made up another place. And here you can see that I've caught up on the pack that uh, that uh, I uh, I lost due to my missed gear shifts. So once again, getting into the toe, and to be fair, making up quite a bit of time here, coming into the uh, into the final corner, and once again trying to get the best exit that I can onto that uh, onto the pit straight here. Now getting to the slipstream here once again I see there's a bit of debris on track this time so that's something to look out for on, uh, on, the, on the next laps. Another little chicane to, uh, <laughs> to navigate round during the course of, of the race but happy to say that I've made up a, a fair bit of, bit of ground uh, once again into that first hairpin, downshifting in there, trying to get the best exit possible and once again just ruining all the progress I've made with a shift into, into fifth. Uh, but no, no, never mind, I mean uh, still making progress into, into the second hairpin, pushing maybe a bit hard there. I'm coming on to the back straight again later on this lap I'm in prime position to take advantage of uh, that slipstream and happy to say that uh, I attempt a move and 
do I get through on this lap? No, no, no. Just not quite close enough to uh, to outbreak him into uh, into Brundle there under the bridge. But hey, living to fight another day, and it's all good fun. I mean, this is the stuff I love: wheel to wheel racing. And once again, going around this bit of debris on um, on the pit straight here, it had to be removed. And seeing as it's a new chicane, I think uh, I've got to find it. I've got to find a name for it before the end of the race, so my brain will be uh, working overtime. Here, coming out of the uh, first hairpin again, the two cars in front get get close, but don't actually lose too much time. But I try to capitalise by uh, going around the outside this time, which I'm absolutely loving. Just on the limit there, trying to find my way around the outside onto the outside curbs here. But the, the issue is the driver on the inside has the optimal line under braking for Agostini. So going in, I go a bit too wide and um, just lose all grip. There's absolutely no grip offline there. It's like an ice rink and you can see I lost uh, you know, a couple of places there. So once again, later on the lap, coming, on, coming down the back straight, taking, uh, getting into the slipstream again, learning my lesson, trying to stay in it for as long as possible. Is the move on? Can I get past this driver? Yes, I can. So happy with that. And time to uh, take chase again with uh, this this white car, looking resplendent, I must say, in the sun in the sunset. Coming into the back straight here, in an optimal position for a slipstream, going around the uh, the debris chicane, and I've decided to call it swingers because uh, the swinger chicane, because you need to swing swing around it to. Uh, to avoid hitting it, so uh, yeah, going around swingers there, and here coming into this corner again, onto the back straight, and finally I think making some progress, and do I make a pass here? Yes I do, so happy to say that I had enough speed going down the, uh, the back straight to, to make the move, stick down the straight, and into Brundle. And job done for now, if I uh, don't miss any more gear shifts. <laughs> and here, we're in the latter stages of the race, I believe, so just trying to see where I can make uh, make inroads on, on the cars, cars ahead. And by this point, um, yeah, you saw I got a bit of oversteer there. Maybe the rears were getting a bit overheated towards the, uh, the end of the race. It was a very warm day, uh, despite the sun setting. And uh, that was it, check a flag. So finished the race 23rd, I believe. So making up six places after being 29th at the end of the first lap, which is, uh, which is good, I think. And that meant that I started in 23rd place for race two on Sunday afternoon. You can just see me here pulling into my grid slot after the uh, green, fa green flag lap or formation lap and just checking that uh, it's in first gear, thinking to myself, is it in yet? <laughs> and from here, I'm just trying to stay focused and looking forward to the start procedure. Eyes straight ahead, letting the revs rise, waiting, 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 and we're off. And as you can see, I get a really good launch, better than the cars in front of me. going towards the first corner you can see a massive accident in front of me which I really which really took me by surprise and you know undid all of the uh, the good start that I made as I was trying to get through it and as you can see here what threw me was that car just coming looking as though it was going straight into my path which was, which was quite disconcerting um, which led me to take my foot off the gas um, now that, that was a potentially very very dangerous incident um, you know, if the car in front had bounced into the, into the, into the oncoming uh, traffic there. But from here, I mean, I knew that the race was going to be uh, red flagged, so I didn't bother trying to make any, uh, any inroads on, on the cars ahead. Just uh, looking out for, uh, yeah, the next Marshall's post in there. There, it was confirmed that the, that, uh, the race had been, in fact, red flagged. 
my girlfriend was watching up on the hill there, so just giving her a little wave. <laughs> Don't know if she saw me or not, because there was a lot of go lot going on. But it's always good to uh, acknowledge those that have come a long way to uh, to watch you. So with that, we restarted the race, and once again, I got a lightning start, learning my lessons from race one or round one, and not having it in gear. Um, during uh, the first race, I was just determined to get a good start, and that I did. Now, coming into the first corner, look on the outside there, there's a car there. Listen out for that. And uh, I look in my mirrors, and here we, here we see it again. Just listen out for that, for that sound. Um, I hear a massive sound. Just look in my mirrors and see a car barrel rolling into the gravel. Um, I could not believe my eyes, to be honest with you. And the media thoughts were for the, the drivers involved. If you look at my reaction here, um, <laughs> it's just one of complete disbelief. There, um, I've never, I've never seen a road accident on the road, let alone um, a car barrel rolling into the grass in my mirrors. So, yeah, it was very, very disconcerting to see. My, my immediate kind of concern was for the drivers involved. So that was a very big, um, big accident. By this point, I knew that the race had been red flagged. Um, but I'm glad to say that yeah the driver was okay so here I am on the grid for the second restart just um, waiting for them for them to clear for the marshals to clear the car up I take my gloves off to get some air on I'm just putting them on again there and uh, once again I get a lightning start um, getting through the middle of the pack but kind of getting bought there so that halted my momentum but I was encouraged to see that my initial launch was pretty pretty good so from here just trying to get through the first corner cleanly um, and yeah I'm with I'm with the pack which is which is the main thing and I get overtaken into the first half in here um, but I'm through through safely and cleanly which is the main thing here I get I don't get forced onto the grass but I just choose to go onto the grass rather than backing out of the, uh, the throttle so here, just going into uh, to this corner, trying to stay on the back of the uh, the back of the pack, and uh, see what we can do into Agostini, and um, you know, just making some inroads here. Not the optimal line, but still making up time. Bit of an oversteer moment there, and gear changes are okay going to the corner that time. Here onto the back straight later on in the lap getting alongside the car who's slightly in front of me so no slipstream but then um, yeah decided to get back in to, uh, to keep keep pace with the pack in front no success there but I'm in an optimal position coming into the into the final corner and onto the pit straight here and here I've got uh, another car in front no space on the outside so I go to the inside and just as that gap opens I decide to take a chance and uh, see what I can do on the inside there um, wasn't quite able to uh, to make the move stick um, but decided to take a bit of a chance there getting into that gap beyond the pit, pit exit as soon as I could and going through the uh, the first air bit there He's opened up a bit of a gap, but um, nevertheless, yeah, keen to see what progress I make. I can make. And here you see me coming to the pit straight, going a bit wide. I wasn't in, really in the right gear, but I think I might have been testing out another gear going into that corner just to help combat the rear end instability that I, I, that I felt. It was a fair bit hotter than, than the race one on um, on. Um, Saturday the day before but I could really feel that in, um, in the handling the rear end was still quite loose and uh, yeah get past again going into, into turn one by uh, too slow and too furious <laughs> on that particular corner excuse my rubbish uh, film references there to that 2003 classic and then coming up into uh, the back straight here, 
this car was actually very fast in a straight line. I think because his bumper was missing, he was actually missing some drag. And I'm not saying that to say the Mick. It was actually pretty pretty quick. So throughout the race, I found it found, found it quite hard to keep up with him in the in the straights. Um, that combined with my dodgy driving into uh, the back straight there, and as you can see, just trying to hang on the back of him coming into the, into the final corner, my back end all over the place. Um, just here yeah, fighting with the with the car. And uh, yeah, we have another driver coming off the road. Um, so that's another place I made, and then back into the slipstream with this driver in front. And then it happened again. And can you believe it? The curse of the SD card strikes again. I can't believe it happened to me again after after the issue that I had at Brands with my video footage cutting out uh, just part way through my second race. Um, to, but to be honest, in this in this case, uh, for race two at Snetterton, there were mitigating circumstances. Um, so, in all in all, for that second race, I was in the car for about 50 minutes rather than the anticipated 20 due to you know the two restarts and the incidents uh, that, that that led to that. But even so, it's uh, no excuse for that to happen uh, twice in a, in a row, and it's led me to. Uh, to start another section on this in this video actually uh, to do with lessons learned. Now the first lesson that I want to touch upon is get yourself a 10 billion gigabytes uh, SD card. <laughs> no, I mean, I'm really joking. Uh, but in all seriousness, um, yeah, I've, I've had issues with my V box, which uh, which for you know the non racing folk among you um, is a data logging and. Um, and uh, kind of uh, camera piece of technology. So what it does is it logs your data and it takes videos uh, of, of your racing essentially to help you with, with your driving performance. Now that stopped working at the weekend so I was purely uh, relying on my, on my GoPro and yeah, I think 50 minutes was just too much for my 64 gig uh, uh, SD card that, that's in it. Um, so yeah, I'll be ordering a 10 billion gigabyte one uh, as we speak. In fact, maybe you got to get onto Amazon and, and do that now. I need to joking, you know, 256 gig, gig should, should sort it. But in all seriousness, um, I want to use that as a lesson to be prepared. I mean, in life, you can't be prepared for every, every eventuality, but you can be prepared for the ones that you do like you have control over, such as races running, running over time. So I've used uh, this situation as a lesson for me to ensure that my uh, camera storage is uh, is big enough for when races run run over time. So that's a lesson learned for me. Now the next lesson that I want to touch upon is turning failure into opportunity. Um, now if you you know review the video back or remember you know the, the aspects of the video that you've just seen. You'll notice that I did include aspects of my driving that I wasn't particularly impressed with uh, myself. And to be honest, I was, I mean, an about whether to, you know, include aspects of my driving that made me look, look not so good or made me look like a bit of an idiot, to be honest with you. Uh, but I think it's, in, it's important in when documenting journeys like this or um, documenting videos like this that yeah, it's just great to show that um, things don't go to plan at all. Um, and like with my gear changing, um, that you know I messed up a number of times as you saw, and that situation at the beginning of race one where I neglected to put the car into first gear at the beginning of the race. You know, those are all examples of failure, and I really don't believe that you know we can maximise our potential as you know human beings whether it's in a sport like this or in any aspect of life or in anything that we're looking to improve unless we fail um, at points um, you know i believe it's important because it highlights where areas that we need to improve in this case i need to improve on aspects of my, my gear changing and prior to that my race starts for those of you that saw my brand's hatch video my race starts weren't that great either but the great thing about failure is that it really focuses your mind on how to improve um, and as you saw, you know, throughout the second, throughout the subsequent starts after my first um, race start failure, my race starts were excellent. And that's because I learned from the situation and was, and was absolutely determined to nail them and get them absolutely right 
for uh, those next races. So that's an example of how failures become my friend. Um, and sometimes I think when we fail, you know, we let, we allow our egos to get in the way and think to ourselves that uh, you know it automatically shows that we're not good at something or that we're talentless at something. But instead, um, I think I've heard the quote before: "Fail means first attempt at learning." And you know, I use those examples in this video as first attempts at learning. Yes, I, I failed in certain aspects, but I'll use be using those failures as a basis to uh, make myself a better driver uh, moving forward. And uh, my final lesson learned for today is to have fun. Now, racing, especially in the championship I'm in, where for me, I mean, I do a lot of the stuff myself. I, I'm gonna come to races by myself and I have family and friends that come to watch me race sometimes. Uh, but in terms of preparation for the race, getting to the race, uh, setting up for the race, um, and doing the driving, you know, a lot of that I feel is, is on me. Um, and it's the same for a lot of the other drivers. We do have, tend to have people that, you know, can support us when, when and where they can. Uh, but when you're in the car, it is just you. And that can be a, quite a pressurizing situation, uh, believe it or not, both physically uh, and mentally. And sometimes when, you know, we want to do well, or for, particularly when I want to do well at something and do the best I can, it's important not to let that the pressure that, you know, one puts upon oneself to take away from the fun of, of racing, because that's ultimately why I do it. And I, you know, dedicate the time and effort to doing it um, is because I love it so much and I really, really, really enjoy it. So if there's anything I've learned uh, from uh, my most recent race weekend, it's just to have fun. Um, you know, it can be quite nerve wracking. It can be quite pressurizing. But at the, at the end of the day, I feel privileged to be able to do this. And I'm just you know, keen to keep on having fun along the way, regardless of what gets thrown at me, uh, literally. <laughs> um, throughout every every race weekend so that's why regardless of what the result is so if for example if you saw my race results and qualifying results uh, throughout the weekend you know I qualified 20th uh, finished 23rd in that first race and, and then you know finished around the 20 20 mark um, I think 23rd again in the uh, in the second race um, so to be honest, I don't even remember what, what position I finished in because it was quite low and I didn't really pay attention. But the point I want to make is that regardless of that, I had absolute fun. Um, as you can see from the video, there was still wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing throughout the field. And even though I wasn't you know, at the sharp end of the grid, I really reveled in, um, in the track action and you know, doing what I love. So you know, I urge everyone watching this to, you know, just have fun and aim to have fun in whatever you do because that is what makes it worthwhile and it's what makes it it's what makes life work worthwhile at the end of the day anyway rambling over um so i hope you've enjoyed this latest installment um and i've enjoyed you know sharing sharing this particular round with you um and i hope you got some um you know more insights and uh you know, insights into the way that I approach racing and the way that I think, and I hope you've been able to take something away from the video as well. Um, so if you like what you've seen, please uh, give us a like, uh, and please hit the uh, subscribe button below. Um, Cause yeah, I'm just happy to, to share this journey with you all. And uh, yeah, thanks again for watching. Thank you for taking the time to watch and I will see you next time. Thank you.